We are together, and I'm glad. Are you glad to be here, Pastor Robert? I'm glad to be I'm here. I'm glad that you're glad. We're talking about the anchor of the soul. My soul, your soul, your soul, all of our souls need to be anchored, grounded. But you don't anchor your soul in just anything. That's where the heartache and the anger and the frustration, we are anchoring our soul in an inner vow, in a promise, you know, in something that never came. And that's why many of us are so bitter, because we anchored our souls in things that didn't come to pass like having a fistful of water. But the Christian must anchor his or her soul in the character, the promises, and the word of God. So today we're going to talk about hope, a refuge in God. You know, when I think of refuge, I think of a hiding place. The, 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 the scripture says, you are my hiding place. Okay. You always fill my soul with songs of deliverance mm -hmm. whenever I feel afraid. You know, so when, when, you, when, you, when you're hidden, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You're covered. Refuge is covering. You know, in, 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 the, in the ancient uh, text, in the, in the Hebrew text or in the Bible, it talks about the, the fact that they were mandated to build cities of refuge for people who committed crimes and people who the society you know, was getting ready to, to accuse them and, 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 and execute them for whatever. And they would run to the city of refuge and they would be what? Protected. Even, even society could not go behind those sacred walls. Well, that's what happens when the enemy comes after you. When you're under his protection, he cannot destroy you. Let's look at God. Hebrews 6, 17 through 18. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay up hold upon the hope set before us. Now, what does it mean to have refuge in God? What does it mean to you when you hear the fact that you have a refuge in God, what does it do, what does it do to you? Uh, it does, it gives me hope it, to know that I have a safe place or a haven, a safe place, a place that I know that I'm protected, a place that I know that I, 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 I I'm, 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 I'm safe. Did you hear the words protection and safety? You know, any anybody, man or woman, but particularly women, we we thrive on security. Safety, you know, I, I want to know that 10 years from now, I will be protected. Or okay. that's why you have 401k, you have IRAs, you think you have social security, whatever, because you feel safe for the future years. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to have those kinds of things in place. But when you're talking about your future in terms of your soul or even your life, you need to know there's a place of refuge in the midst of this, this chaotic world, okay? God is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe. When you have unwavering hope in God, when you have hope that is not weak, or when you're not hopeless, when you're hopeful, he becomes your refuge. He insulates you. He insulates you from the storm. You know, I, I, I feel secure. Trust me, storms are raging in my life right now, but I feel secure. I should be hanging from a tree like a monkey, mm -hmm. counting fruits that are not there. I should be out of my mind. Mm -hmm. But I am now so secured in him. And, and many of you would have lost your mind a long time ago. Many of you were borderline, and God rescued you because you were what? Under his insurance plan, protection. Hope brings strong consolation. We are comforted in the hope of God. We have a few young women in our church who have just lost mother and brother. And, you know, when I see them coming in and, and they're worshiping the Lord and, and they're not home, you know, locked in and, and, and depressed and, and giving up and not eating and not bathing and don't want to go to work, they could do that. I mean, that's expected when you're grieving. 
But I see them coming, and even though the tears are coming down and they have their moments, they are getting what comfort. Blessed are they that mourn, but they shall be comforted. So God keeps our minds in perfect peace. Peace, peace. Because what? We hope in him. There can be no peace without hope in God. No peace, no hope. No peace, no hope. If you don't have hope, don't expect peace. How can you expect to have peace when you don't trust? Okay. You know, one of the most difficult things is to, is to have a relationship with a person who does not trust you. Mm. You know, um, like, like driving. Let's look at that. You know, because I used to aggravate you, Pastor Robin, because yes. I didn't trust your driving. Yes. So, you know, when I sat in your car, <laughs> see, and you're driving your car, and you have your license. I'm sitting in the front seat as a guest and a passenger. You pay the, the, the car note. And I'm sitting there as a guest in your car, but I'm going to tell you how to drive your car. My God. Aren't you glad that I'm delivered? I'm I, am so delivered. delivered. I am so she delivered. I am so delivered. Because I would tell you when to turn and when not to turn. And then I would throw up my hand and say, okay, all right, all right, all right. Why did you turn there? Or why didn't you turn there? You know, the Lord had to deliver me. You know why? Because I had to learn to trust your driving. Yes. I didn't feel comfortable with your driving. I didn't, I didn't believe in your driving. Amen. Now I can sit in your car and sleep. And many of you are trying to tell God what to do. Turn here, go there, deliver me now, do this, open that. Because we don't trust that he has a better plan. My God. Okay? Psalm 119 and 114 says, You are my refuge and my shield. I have put my hope in your word. God has provided refuge for the guilty. The sinner can come and find refuge. Yes, yes, yes. The guilty can come and be guiltless. The brokenhearted can come and be healed. You may be brokenhearted today, but that's where you, you take your brokenheartedness. Bring your broken heart to the Lord right now and believe that he can mend it and put it back together again. Hope is set before us as a refuge, protection, mm -hmm. covering. That's what that means. Believers can flee to a place of security in their hope. No hope means no security. Listen, mm -hmm. I don't, you know, many, many, many people have a watchdog, then they have ABT, and then they have somebody, like a lot of these movie stars. They have, you know, they have somebody there physically, then they have a sophisticated system, and then they have dogs, pit bulls, why? Security. Because they don't believe that they're protected without it. You don't have to have a pit bull. You just need the Holy Ghost. It'll be all right. Zechariah 9 and 12 says, Return to your fortress, O prisoner of hope. Even now I will announce that I will restore twice as much to you. I, I just want somebody to know there's nothing wrong with having security systems. There's nothing wrong with having protection. You need an alarm system on your house and on your car. But many people live fearful because they don't trust God. Let's have reflection. God has created a refuge for those that believe on him. Start today studying to understand the plan of redemption and its benefits. God has already arranged for our security in our present and future lives. Hoping God gives us access to this security. Did you hear that? Safety and security. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from mine enemy. Get the tape. He is faithful. He's a faithful God. He will not pull the umbrella down in the storm. He will not leave you out in the cold. He will not put you out the car and tell you to walk home. You're under his protective eye. Hope in the Lord and be strong in your faith in Jesus' name.